Sometimes you can only understand things that you've experienced previously. This, in many ways, is a good thing, because I would never wish any form of mental illness onto another person, even if it were the only way to make someone understand what I, along with many others, deal with each day. For each minute of each day, I'm severely depressed. This doesn't mean that I'm constantly unhappy. It means that from the time that I wake up until the time that I go to sleep, I'm overwhelmingly tired. And as is true with most days, I'm unmotivated and uninterested in my daily routine. It's a complex concept to understand, but fortunately, awareness of the seriousness of mental health is rising. The concern and drive to understand is in the process of scaling a slightly sloped mountain while securely attached to a safety rope. I think that more and more we're beginning to realize that, as we all have brains, hopefully, we're all susceptible to a chemical disruption. But as awareness is raised, strength is acquired. Today I feel motivated and engaged. It's a good day for me, as I haven't reached an impossible elevation yet. I've learned to appreciate these moments and to channel my motivation and passion into beneficial activities, both for myself and for others. You wake up in the morning and you take a few pills. You go to sleep at night and you take a couple more pills. Sometimes you wonder if you're single-handedly funding the FDA. You have a choice. You don't have to be on medications. You certainly don't want to be on them. But then you think about the likelihood of another mental breakdown. Or worse, a psychotic break, a self-harming binge, a few suicide attempts and hospitalizations. And you realize that maybe your doctors know best. At least for right now. The side effects of nausea, emotional flatness, muscle tremors, and the onset of withdrawal if you accidentally take your morning pills a few hours late are better than death. Right? Survivalist tactics to endure the hardships of the sensitive soul are often psychiatry's checklist for the sick psyche. But who the fuck are they to judge me or you? Why, if I really am sick, am I doomed to stay that way? S-I-C-K, stamped on the head for all to see as I stumble from one insipid scenario to another. We are not allowed to live free. Free from fear, free from judgment of others. This fear of being judged breeds self-hate, and that leads to hurting others and yourself. We put on masks and barriers to protect ourselves, but in the end they hurt us and everyone around us. Self-hate breeds hate. Crazy isn't a fair word. People are not crazy. They're misunderstood. People with disabilities are still people. We have to work twice as hard as anyone else. We deserve respect just like anyone else. We need to stay strong and not be ashamed of our illness. And more than anything, we have to stick together and support each other when times are tough. No matter how bad things get, we must remember that it could always be worse. We must remember that, at least for this moment, we have our lives, however difficult they may be. I cannot be saved. This is the bullet, and this is my friend.